Awesome. So, Bobby, um, what have you guys been doing so far? So I know where to jump in. We are. Uh, we've completed three days of Master Moth, and then we're three days into um, LOMIT OFCT, so Language Master Instructor Training. I'm just in the middle of giving imagination activation. All of it's related in a brand new way to conscious life upgrade coaching, which is using the signals with action steps on an ongoing, repeating basis to help people not just like for me, every time I hopefully come through every six months, people start to move upscale. They have somebody there as an anchor, a guide for what's up, body language, their spoken language, help them design what their world is, and the action steps from the outcome and then being accountable to you know come back and how you doing, where are you, body gives a signal, language, life situation, and then the next steps from there. And um, we have the group that are here, three will be going home on Sunday, or completing on Sunday, and uh, 13 of us will go on for the rest of SBLT BioOptic and the rest of Conscious Life Upgrade Coaching. Cool. You know, Bob, if you scoot over to sit by the person to the right of Alyssa, you'll be in the picture. How's oh, that? there you go. Now you're in the picture. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> so do, is everyone in the room we'll do, do a show of hands here are you planning on using uh, what you're ingesting and extracting from um, working with Bob over this uh, period in a client practice format okay well that answers that gotcha alright and How many people are um, already have an, a, a large existing client base or are people starting? I guess if you have a large existing client base, raise your hand. Okay. All right. So it looks like um, uh, reaching your, uh, your um, correct uh, clients is probably a priority. Yes or Yes. 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 Okay. yes. Cool. Cool. All right. Um, how many people uh, are familiar with using uh, Meetup right now? Okay. And how many people are familiar with using uh, YouTube as a client attraction mechanism? Okay. And uh, Kindle books? iTunes? Okay. Okie dokie. Oh, you're going to have some fun. I can I can tell. So uh, Bob and I had this conversation about uh, what um, we came to to call beautiful business here. When was that, Bob? A couple of months ago when you were here. Um, and really, what uh, what beautiful business in my mind uh, kind of. Um, comes down to is sort of a a um, an, a a foundation or um, a sort of a, a matrix or filter of all activities is it's a simple refinement of uh, how you do what you do. So, for example, if um, Alyssa, if you have a conversation with a client, you can have a conversation with a client and that's a one-off conversation and that's great it's a great service for your client and there may be some uh, commerce exchanged uh, you may be compensated um, financially or some other resource exchange and that's the completion of the entire exchange so what I've done in my own beautiful business is I've simply changed how I do what I do I do the same thing I have in individual interactions and group interactions. Primary difference between what I do and what most people do is I always, always, always capture content. Even though there are two video cameras running right now, I'm recording this too, just in case everything on the other end, um, uh, you know, there, for some reason there's no uh, residue of our conversation. And uh, so, for example, Alyssa, if you had a conversation with someone, you could use that as a one-off conversation, or you could publish that conversation as a audio. You could um, uh, put a single-frame piece of video over the top of it and publish it as a YouTube video. 
because YouTube, there is no such thing as audios on YouTube. You have to turn it into a video. Uh, you could, uh, like Bob does occasionally, does uh, webinars or teleconferences where you have one-on-one -on -one conversations with individuals and you have several of those back-to-back uh, -back or one after another and you do it in a group setting. And at the same time, you may be answering questions in a chat window so that there's a, uh, a different type of uh, cadence or rhythm to the entire conversation. So the, the primary thing that I think is a really great uh, takeaway for all of you is to think about changing slightly how you do what you do so that every time you have any type of interaction, uh, instead of just sharing with one person, you're either sharing with multiple people or you're setting up to share with multiple pe people, which means wherever you go, you have a, a, some sort of digital recorder you take with you. Yeah, how many people have been at my home when uh, Bob is doing a talk? So yeah, Bob's been there. Oh, well, I've I've been there too a couple of times when, when I was there. <clears throat> and so um, you'll notice that in the background I may have a video camera running, and I um, pretty pretty consistently have a recording, a digital recorder running. Uh, to capture that uh, content so that it can be deployed and serve multiple people. Uh, because if you if you sort of think about the the uh, time continuum of your interactions with people, if you if you take your conversations with people and you can reduce those into some form of content, whether it's written or audio or video, and can publish those, then uh, there that's a, a way to to leave a lasting uh, footprint in the sand, as it were. So there's a there's a good deal of conversation in the. Are y'all familiar with the green books and that technology? Have you talked a little about that, Bob? Yes. I was reading in uh, some of the Bridge to Freedom, um, or maybe it was uh, something from uh, Elizabeth Clare Prophet. Anyway, she was talking about uh, when we complete our physical journey on this earth and we make our our uh, transition, and she said at that point in time. Um, there's a uh, part of the mantle of what we've uh, integrated into our beings goes with us and a great deal of that mantle though is left here on this earth and is meant to be redistributed to someone else to sort of pick up the torch and continue our work so for example Bob right now is in essence he's created a, um, a container in which he can transmit his mantle while he's still alive very convenient way easier to transmit your mantle while you're alive, right? <laughs> I mean, you can do it from the other side, and it's, you know, in general, my opinion is, or my story is, it's way easier to do it while you're here, because we're all in physical reality here. It's easier to, to physically transmit physical material in the physical. So if you think about, um, as you uh, go through your daily activities, the the light that you're drawing down and anchoring through whatever activity, whatever um, uh, interchanges you have during your day with uh, your clients and and customers and kin, if you think about um, arranging your activities so that your mantle can transfer easily, so how can you arrange your day so that everything that you translate through from um, your spiritual sponsorship into physical reality persists past you? It's a very interesting question. And we're at the, the first time ever, uh, as far as I can tell, in our, uh, our technological evolution where we can truly leave our entire legacy behind, or the majority of it. Uh, so it's an, an interesting uh, internal conversation to continually have with yourself as you're going through your activities during the day is to make sure that instead of um, just doing what you're doing, think about um, ensuring as you're doing what you're doing that you're creating a way to uh, uh, capture and share your, your um, mantle with uh, whoever may come after you hundreds or thousands of years later. Is that is that a useful way to think about? It, it also has the side effect of you know if you talk with one person and have a client interaction, then you have one increment of uh, of uh, 
commerce or uh, resource exchange where you're exchanging your light in essence for another person's uh, concentrated light which we call money and if you can capture your uh, content and redeploy that in multiple ways then you can multiply your uh, supply or your abundance by multiplying your service to other people that uh, does anybody know who Jim Rohn was? The speaker, Jim Rohn? Uh, yeah. Jim, he, he was, a, I, I actually had the opportunity to see him, to sit a few rows back and watch him speak one day here in Austin years ago. And he, he had a very famous quote that he used over and over. And he said, um, your marketplace compensates you based on the value you bring. And that's really interesting. That's always stuck with me because the value you bring, most people think of the value they bring as, um, especially in a client practice, as sharing one-on-one. -on -one. In other words, you're, you're providing a great value or service to the person you know, right in front of you that you're having a, a relationship with in conversation. And if you expand that to uh, considering that there are thousands of people simultaneously waiting to be served by you, potentially, and simply arranging to have that uh, activity occur. And that's where your um, engagement of technology comes in, where you, um, you know, uh, master different uh, forms of uh, content deployment. So in essence, that's, that's sort of the core or crux of uh, what I think of as beautiful business is uh, having conversations with uh, multiple people simultaneously over long, long periods of time. So is that, um, is that do you think that's a useful uh, direction to go, Bob? Yes, and let them know everybody what you think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How many know the idea of, like for me, when I created Herbal and Natural Healing way back as a recording, I didn't have to do that class. I haven't done that class since. And high agreements. I, now I start people with high agreement MP3 before I go do coaching. All my DVDs, the same thing. Is that like, you watch that first, then we'll keep going from there. I don't have to go back. To, it's boring to go back to the basics. And it also, I only serve a very small number if I have to do it every time. So right. replicating our capability through technology is the deal. Yeah. yeah. And in fact, I, th I think Bob uh, touched on a um, an important sort of cornerstone of beautiful business to me is that if you are – if you're only sharing with one person at a time, there's only a certain amount of light you can draw down an anchor in our physical reality. And I choose now. Have you talked about light as sort of a uh, a substance that has to be anchored in our octave, or have, have you talked about it that in in your conversations? Intelligent light substance. Yes. 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 Okay, so um, the, the idea, and I think it's an interesting consideration, is that light is a, a non-resonant of this octave and that it's up to us to draw down an anchor and continually um, feed light into this octave from light's natural octave. And so if we're, if we're um, constantly, as Bob said, going over the same material with the same people over and over again, it becomes boring. I, you know, there's only, you know, so so many hundreds of conversations you can have that are the same conversation before you, um, your, your uh, vibration or your energetic uh, um, participation in your conversations changes quality. And I vote with Bob is that you know uh, my my rule is that if I if I say something three times, I turn it into content. If I have the same conversation more than three times, I know that's something that I, I best turn into content so that I can uh, send people to that piece of content. And I recommend you do the same thing too. In fact, I have a really interesting um, example of how that can change a business. Uh, in I guess it was in 2007, I had this internal conversation with myself as I'd like that I'd like to double the income in our um, business, our radical health business. And at the time I was doing client consultations one-on-one -on -one most of the day. In fact, I figured out that um, uh, between Yamaya and I, we'd been doing uh, 100, close to 100 client hours every week for months. And that's a lot of time. And I was doing most of that. 
And it was, uh, you know, we were doing face to face and by phone and by Skype and by email. And so we ran all the time zones. And I was talking with people over and over and over. And so, you know, I asked myself, well, how do I double my income in my business? And, you know, my math says I ain't 200 hours in a week. And so I had a fundamental challenge. Um, and what I did was I took the common denominators, like Bob said, like he was talking about higher agreements. And, um, you know, if you look in Bob's uh, library of content, which I recommend you have copies of everything, um, if you uh, if you think about um, going through the same conversation over and over again, which is what I did, is I, I looked at the common denominators of all my client intake. In other words, the first conversations I had with clients. And I found that I was saying the same thing over and over and over. And in fact, I um, um, went through, went back to recording. See, again, that's useful to, to be sure and capture content. And I listened to a bunch of recordings. It's the same thing over and over. So what I did was I, I created our first uh, Radical Health step-by-step -step guide. And I what I said in my step-by-step -step guide is that if you... If you'd like to have, um, if you'd like to consult with me, I only do free consulting, except you have to go through this step by step guide and implement every step for three to four months, which means they had to listen to the guide. And so there were two kinds of people those who would go through and take action, and those who, you know, were somehow imagining something would happen without action. And then of the people that did take action, <laughs> was that a good way to say that? So there, there, there are some people that, uh, you know, the, the secret um, uh, sort of there's a missing component that you do have to take action. Uh, so um, of the people that did take action, those two, those people kind of formed into two groups. One, one group would they had no questions. All their questions were answered because of the interaction with the content and their own ability to take their life experience and put into to activity what they learn. The other part, the other uh, few people would ask a question, except they wouldn't be these long questions that I used to get, where people would ramble on for, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of words, telling about their whole life story, and they and I sometimes was unable to determine what the question was in all their uh, conversation. That changed to these short, almost like tweets. Like, I, I did your step-by-step -step guide, and on step four in this paragraph, I tried this, and I was trying to get this effect, and I got this, and how do I get what I was after? In other words, what refinement? And I'd give them a few experiments, and they might go off for weeks or months or years before they came back, or not at all. In other words, they, there was no requirement to come back because um, from their experiments, they resolved their question. And what happened in our business was, in a 30-day period from the time I released that step-by-step -step guide, 30 days later, our client hours had gone from 100 a week to one a week, and our uh, income had gone up 300%. Wow. Wow. And so what I learned, that was a very important lesson to learn because I had thought very arrogantly, my ego had convinced me that it was very important for me to be... Uh, engaged. In other words, the only way people could be served by what my spiritual sponsorship was flowing through me was for me to somehow open my mouth one-on-one -on -one to people. And I was incorrect. That was, um, that was a uh, uh, incorrect uh, assumption on my part. What I learned was that it was more important for me to um, be a correct sort of step-down transformer and to take what what inspiration was coming to me from my sponsorship or you know, what, however you translate non-physical reality, whatever was coming to me, it was my responsibility simply to translate that for the people that were destined to be served by me. That was my only job. And so what I do is uh, kind of what Bob does now is I'll go through a set of material with a, a group of people, usually live, until I refine that set of material and that material changes into content and I go on to the next thing which I've noticed Bob does a lot now too. So for example, higher agreements, I was in the first class or the first higher agreements, 
you know, that was years ago, Bob. Was that probably 2008 or nine? Long? So home, high agreements was back then. It was a short conversation. It yep. rocked. Yep, it was at uh, John Schmidt's house on Blue Bonnet. Long, long ago. And then Bob has d did that uh, high agreements class live for groups of people. And then he would go back and do uh, content. And then sometimes he would do it live again. And I suspect you're refining different um, uh, kind of facets of the material to, you know, it's kind of like a diamond is you, you start with the diamond and you begin faceting it and sharpening the edges until you um, allow the true jewel of what's uh, internal to the the uh, rough rock to be um, uh, presented or expressed. And so that's a really good uh, formula to use and it's one I use all the time is uh, working live with people because people will have questions which will remind me about what I'm on automatic about. And I'm on automatic about a lot and so are all of you, each one of you has a, a um, a, uh, a vast reservoir of life experience that you're on automatic about. You've so integrated it into your uh, consciousness that you, the words you use a lot of times, the, the uh, way you converse is you'll uh, imagine that people understand your entire range of life experience and what live uh, interactions um, the the service they provide us is they remind us what we're on automatic about people ask questions they go huh that's a good thing if you're doing a live presentation or a conversation with a group of people if you notice everybody goes slack jawed in the room and they go huh <laughs> that's an indication you you've uh, entered into a realm where you're on automatic uh, and that, that's a time to say, to sort of, um, you know, uh, slow down your pace and ask your room to engage you and help you determine what uh, to communicate to them to help you help uh, define better what it is you're talking about. Now, I have to do that a lot, right, Bob? Yeah, me too. Um, so, um, uh, I think... A, great place for all of you to start is um, I'll, I'll write up some uh, resources Bob and uh, provide those to you so you can uh, pass along to people um, there's one great resource in, in the whole in the whole um, uh, vein of uh, providing content that uh, I've gone over many many times before is I've got a two-hour uh, video that walks through how to uh, create meetup groups and in general, most in most cities around the country, um, you can form a meetup group and meetup will notify their own membership related to the topics you select for your meetup group. And in Austin, those uh, notifications go out to about 30,000 people. In New York, they can go out to any place between 150 to 300,000 people. So the... the um, the ability for you to reach your tribe, so to speak, is a, um, a fairly straightforward process. And so I'd recommend that as a, a, a starting point is um, I'll, I'll make a note to um, pass along that uh, link to Bob. And David, is this the one you made? Yeah, it's, it's a, I was at a um, uh, one of the mastermind groups that I participate here uh, in town. Well, they were, they were holding it here in town, and it, it's a it's a closed group, and um, I I'm unsure how many. Um, I, I would I'd probably guess there's close to a billion dollars a year of revenue uh, or more um, in that room just with that group of people. There were about thirty people, and I went through this whole meetup conversation about how I use meetup. And the entire room was silent. I, I, everybody had done their presentations about what their, the, the slick thing they were doing was. And I went through my simple meetup thing and everybody just was, it, just you could hear a pin drop. And everybody said, oh, can, can you like, you know, do some, you know, video or something about that so we can go implement it? And a lot of the guys in the room stopped doing all the entire complicated marketing activities they were doing and are using the the uh, meetup format instead now it's very very powerful very powerful who, who's uh who all is from the austin area there Alyssa? besides you uh, 
Barbara Taylor. Hi, Barbara. I see you. So, okay. So just a couple of people. Um, I, I, uh, I've been uh, talking with Bob and a couple of other people and I, uh, I, am envisioning doing a, sort of a, a mastermind group that's a, a virtual group that can touch a lot of people and uh, for those people that actually are working with uh, Meetup and YouTube and iTunes, Kindle, things like that to uh, on an ongoing basis like meet every couple of weeks and have people uh, feel questions about you know if you know, how can I refine my Meetup group or the events I'm running or what do I publish in Kindle and what do I publish on my website? What do I publish in YouTube, iTunes? Because each of these uh, venues have a specific format of content that's required to be published in those venues. Uh, and also those a lot of those venues require that the what you publish be exclusively published there. For example, if you publish an Amazon book, um, to receive the highest compensation from Amazon, which is a good thing, you're required to give them exclusive uh, publishing rights. So what you do is you do you figure out what you're going to publish on your website, which is a synopsis or summary, or in a YouTube video or iTunes, which will then uh, relate what's in your uh, Kindle book. Uh, because uh, if a really interesting statistic to consider is that 60% of every online credit card swipe right now goes through Amazon. So, who's is anybody in the process of writing a book right now? Raise your hand if you're okay. So Barbara is. Um, yay, Bob. Me too. Um, so um, one of the things that you might consider doing as you're working with your clients and even uh, considering your daily activities is to think about what you can. Um, condense or distill into a written material and instead of thinking about publishing those as free blog posts think about publishing those as Kindle books and how much longer do we are we gonna go today Bob and I'll 15 minutes okay 15 minutes so I'm gonna tell you a little story about um, uh, Kindle which may um, I think it's a really good way to help people that are um, how many people publish uh, blog entries on a regular basis? Okay, so one of the recommendations I'll make here is that um, the um, uh, the way that you communicate, the format you communicate, are in essence uh, written and speaking. Those are the two primary. I mean, they're energetic communications also, and uh, spoken and written communications tend to reach uh, larger audiences. So, you know, one of the things that you'll all be served to do is uh, I run on a content calendar, which means that I have certain things I do every week, uh, certain things that uh, periods of time that I read, certain periods of time that I write, and goals for or targets for uh, what gets published when and writing a little bit every day even if it's 10 or 15 minutes is a really really good uh, practice to get into so when you do your morning uh, daily meditations and reading whatever you're reading however you're meditating just add on to that at the end uh, to write for 10 or 15 minutes and you can just get a uh, a lot of times I run my life off this little um, let's see if I can uh, this little egg timer here <laughs> uh, you know the simplest technologies uh, a lot of times I'll you know like if if I have a, a phone conversation or something going on or if I've uh, missed writing when I was supposed to write I'll just you know rack up 10 or 15 minutes on my egg timer and turn it on and write that way you can write and you can focus on your writing instead of focusing on looking at a timepiece that's really important to be focused on what you're doing so um uh, as you do that, uh, most people publish their uh, writing for free in the form of uh, blog entries or um, uh, like I do a lot of interviews with people I know Bob does too and probably many of you also and uh, all those interviews can be turned into transcripts. Um, I have a, a, a girl that I work with on Fiverr and she does immaculate transcriptions and she charges five dollars for 15 minutes. Is that a good deal? 
Yes. Yes. So, uh, you know, instead of ghost writing, I, I figured out long ago that I talk at a rate of, um, in a six by nine four format of a book with a 14, uh, 12 to 14 pixel letter in a book, I speak at about 30 pages an hour. So if a hundred page book is a book, that means that three hours of conversation is a book. And the consideration then is, are you having uh, just conversations with yourself or clients, or are you writing those down and turning them into books? And, and here's the interesting thing about Kindle, and, and this is the story I'm going to wrap up with. Um, I've got a friend uh, who's been a long time uh, user of our superfood products, and she is a money magnet. Everything she does, uh, she's got supply down. I mean, whatever activity comes into her mind to do, she does it and it attracts, you know, uh, large streams of cash. So I was talking with her a few months ago and I said, you know, so what's your latest um, experiment you're doing? What's your latest thing you're doing for money? She said, oh, I'm publishing Kindle books. I said, how's that going? She said, pretty good. I said, well, so how much, you know, do you make off a Kindle book? She said, oh, I make about a thousand dollars a month. I said, wow, that's, you know, that's pretty good. How many books you got? 60. Okay, so uh, so that was my first pause. There's 60. My, my math says that's 60 grand a month. That's, that's more than I was having as income from Kindle. And so my question was, I said, wow, that's a, so, you know, what, how, you know, what's the price point for your books? How do you sell them? She said, oh, I give them away for free. I said, so, so. So I got to, I said, now wait, I got two big questions. First, how'd you write 60 books? Because the last time I talked to her was, you know, a few months before and she had zero books, right? Now she's got 60, she's giving away for free and she's making a thousand dollars a book or having a thousand dollars income a book every month. I said, you know, help me understand this because I am confused about what you're doing. She said, well, it's simple. First thing is most people think of books as multi hundred page books like you know you walk to I mean you can see off in the you know off to the side here all my library and she said the first thing think of books as anything that's written that could be a two-page brochure of which most of the things she's got published are two-page brochures that are technical reviews of things like camcorders and cameras she said those are books too so she said think of books as two-page brochures as 10-page pamphlets or users guides and then normal, what you think of as 100-page books, you know, 10 chapters, 100-page um, uh, books. And so she said, uh, the way that I give these away for free and I have income is that she said, and all this was new to me. I mean, I, I was just fascinated by this because I knew zero about this before our conversation. She said, what I do is when I publish a book, I usually publish it, especially the brochures for 99 cents in the Amazon uh, product ecosystem. And when I publish them, I click the little checkbox that says, make this available in the Kindle Prime lending library. How many people know what Kindle Prime is? Anybody know what Kindle Prime is? Okay, so Kindle Prime is you pay 80 bucks a year, 79.99, and you get all your shipments from Amazon uh, second day shipping for free. And Amazon only uses about 20% of that money pool every month, so 80% is left over. Now, they could have just kept it, but what they do is instead, which is just fascinating, is they take that money and they divide it up between all the downloads from the Kindle Prime lending library. So if you make your book free to Kindle Prime members and they download it, it's free to them, except you get paid whatever's in the pool divided by the number of clicks that much, which usually runs about $2 a click. Oh, uh, yeah. So now think about instead of writing a four or 500 word blog post is you write a, uh, an introductory blog post to that and you serialize that as a set of Kindle books. And you publish the short ones for 99 cents and the long ones, longer ones for 2.99 and the full books for 9.99. And you flip the switch that says, make this free to Kindle Prime members. And then all of a sudden, this this all, all made sense how this person had published 60 books in, you know, a few months. And she was giving away for free and having a very, I mean, tidy sum every month. So that's an example of how she repurposed 
she she was having the same conversation for example she'd find an interesting camera and she'd talk to somebody that then they'd mention well I'm looking for a camcorder and she could have just said well I know this thing about this one you know check it out instead what she did was she took that conversation and created a brochure and took that conversation to millions of people inside Amazon and cashed in on the translation of her um, experience and her expertise regarding um, in this case uh, camcorders and created a brochure for people and uh, and here's another thing that is really interesting that Amazon just um, uh, they just implemented a few weeks ago is uh, everybody know in Google what PPC is pay-per-click so when you do a Google search you see your left-hand results which are called search, uh, search engine results you see the right-hand column which are these little ad blocks those are paid ads well now Amazon has their own internal paid ads so what you can do for example and what this person was I'm sure she's doing now it's been a while since I talked with her you can for a few pennies uh, you can look around in Amazon based on your interests everybody's got interest you look around in Amazon and you search for the products you're interested in that you buy on a normal basis and when you search for those products you like uh, somebody was uh, introduced me to uh, what are those things called bath bomb how many people know what a bath bomb and is see I, news to me and there's millions of dollars of bath bombs that sell every month and I, I had no idea what they are they're these little round things that you drop them in the bath and they fizz and and uh, they're like um, uh, bath beads but when you drop them in the water they fizz because they've got I think sodium bicarbonate or something in them to make them fizz and so you know he was saying uh, that he you know if you search for products like bath bombs and there's no book then what what happens is if you write a book about that topic and you buy you know pay-per-click traffic for a few pennies then anytime somebody searches for a product yours is the only book they find related to the products so you can easily take your expertise and roll it up into books related to products and when people do their search even if it's a two-page brochure and they click and download it you still get paid so that's another um, sort of an expansion of, of uh, thinking about rather than publishing free content take your content and turn it into short Kindle books and um, one of the things that I've um, I came across when I was working on my first Kindle book is that the tools that are available for publishing Kindle books are um, <laughs> they're really uh, um, what's a good word curmudgeonly to work with uh, they're uh, they're tough to work with and uh, the tools tend to be very uh, grumpy like the old uh, the old grumpy dwarf on Snow White and so um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm working on a tool that uh, makes uh, <clears throat> creating those Kindle books much much easier uh, so uh, you can again. pardon Say it again. Cut out. It dropped out. Oh, I, I'm. I'm. Uh, <clears throat> right now, I'm working on a tool that makes uh, ebook publishing or Kindle book publishing much more easy. Awesome. It actually produces books that have clickable table of contents, and uh, as you're writing your book, you can put parentheses around words, and that uh, takes those words and puts them in a clickable index that clicks back in the book. And so, the the result is, if you download Kindle books, most of them are just awful. I mean, they. They look like um, they look like uh, uh, pieces of text, like blog entries, with no navigation, like a normal book. A normal book, you open up to the table of contents, and you can go to a certain place, a page, or you flip to an index, and you can go backwards. And so, um, having the ability to actually have your book look like a book is a a big win inside of Kindle. So, um, uh, I will keep people up to date on my progress on that and uh, I'll, I'll also send um, I'd recommend that each of you uh, join my primary meetup group that I use for all of our client interactions all over the world and you can track all the the tools that I'm working on and different um, uh, how the mastermind group produces or progresses and things like that and I'll send Bob um, that link also So, um, useful information? Yes. yes. Oh, somebody's got a question. Who's that in the back? Thumbs up. 
Yeah, and by the way, how are we doing on Chocolate Bliss? Yeah, yeah. We, we actually we need, we need to order some. <laughs> we, need, we require ordering some more, David. I'm just saying that. So if you could have Aaron send another shipment, just like he did, would oh, you okay. be willing to do that to ask him? Yeah, just uh, have him whatever he sent, sent and charge it the way he did, whatever. Yep. Okay, I'll... Um, I'll put it on my list here. Things get done that get on my list. <laughs> cool. So uh, who, who's that in the back? I missed the name. I was giving my thumbs up. Oh, thumbs up. Awesome. Well, we've got a, like maybe five more minutes. Uh, any questions that pop out by people? Barbara, go ahead. Um, if you publish a book with Lulu, can it then be transferred to Kindle? Oh, good point. Now, that's a really important uh, point because um, for those of us that have massive uh, libraries of content, like I, I did a search on my Radical Health site the other day um, uh, and counted the files, and there's something like 750 articles I've written. So in Amazon, the way it works is... Um, you can either uh, publish exclusively with Amazon or non-exclusively, your choice. If you publish non-exclusively, they pay you a 30% commission on everything they sell. If you publish exclusively, they pay 70%. I recommend the 70. Here's, the, here's how it works though. is When you publish inside of Amazon, they will search the web for your content. And if they find a duplicate of it, they will toss you out of their publishing. So what you do is you have to unpublish. So simple thing is if you've got a vast library of content that you're going to republish inside Amazon, simple way to do it is you go pick the article that you're going to, to uh, roll up into a Kindle, either a, a section of a book or a whole book, and you just unpublish it. You just remove it from your blog or or if you've pub published it someplace where you um, where you it's challenging to unpublish like I've done a lot of joint ventures with people over the years and I got content all over the place and a lot of those people would be uh, less than in, uh, excited to take down you know large chunks of their websites so what you do is you go back and you take a look at that content that you published there and you revise it go through and refine it bring it up to date um, <clears throat> spin it uh, Spinning means that you take uh, a uh, sentence, for example, and you change the words inside the sentence so that the meaning stays the same. And um, maybe you pick, uh, you know, better better verbs or better adverbs, um, and you refine the <clears throat> the uh, what you're communicating so that you um, bring your content up to date, and it's also different than what's uh, existing out in the um, uh, the web page uh, ecosystem. So, any other questions? Can Can you share any information about technologies you discovered to do consultations with people uh, or groups of people? Yes, um, and we'll 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 wrap up with that. Um, that's probably a whole um, there there's two parts of that is one is the technologies for um, uh, capturing content and then the workflows for taking that captured content and turning it into something that can be published so for example um, this uh, video requires uh, or this recording that we're making right here I'm, I'm clear I believe this means one-on-one -on -one session or one-to-many sessions. Yes. Thank you for that. Okay, got it. Yeah. And so, in essence, what you there, there are actually two parts. You, you've got to capture or there, the first step is capturing the content, and the second step is then producing the content, and actually, the, I guess the third step is then deploying the content. Because you might have, like, like this recording here could be, reduced to an audio and could be then... Uh, I was what I believe I heard you say. Um, it seems like he, I see you're, you're being very efficient with, his, with your technology. Well, here's my question is, how do you do a one-on-one -on -one session live? 
Yes. What? Okay. So, oh. Well, a one-on-one -on -one session live is actually what we're doing right now. Right on. Right. So you know. Same you, thing. So you're okay. per, you're, you're doing the same thing. So I'm just saying, Skype right now is a good way, and you can record Skype. Yes, Jeffrey. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So we've got a lot of that figured out. And any other thoughts on that, David? Besides well, that's Skype? a that's a long conversation that will uh, that I think is. Um, uh, I'll do a short form now, and that's a conversation that can go on for years inside a mastermind because the technologies always change. Um, I, I would say one thing is, and I'll send out a link. Is I, I always carry around a um, uh, a, uh, a high quality digital recorder for doing uh, conversations. Always, um, and, and uh, if I'm doing a, a Skype conversation, even even if I'm talking with somebody sort of ad hoc, that uh, there's no real. Um, plan on my part to turn it into something to publish. What I'll do is uh, inside of Skype I've got a little piece of software that costs 20 bucks called Call Recorder and that recording device or that plug-in allows me to either record audio and video or just audio and a lot of times if I'm having a conversation with someone especially if they're you know a really smart person we have you know the conversations take in interesting turns and there may, may be uh, pieces of research I'd like to continue on or uh, uh, different resources they mention that I'll go back and I'll say oh man I can't read my notes or I'm having challenges reading them or oh no I missed writing that down and I can go back to that recording so I use Skype um, in the format you're talking about for actually recording conversations to republish I also use it for note-taking and if you're if you've got access to people like um, uh, mm -hmm. transcribers, instead of going back and listening to an hour or two conversation with somebody, just send the audio to this person, have them transcribe it, and you can then you can do searches inside the text and find what you're looking for uh, really fast. And also, then you can take the transcription of the text and turn that into books. So that's another technology piece of um, what you're talking about is. Uh, having very rapid, high-quality transcriptions done, too. Far better than you sitting down writing. Cool. Cool. Awesome. So I'm going to send, Bob, I'm going to send you a uh, link to the the Meetup Construction Kit video and then uh, the link to the Meetup group I run. And probably sometime... Uh, Oh, in the next few days or so, I'll send out a note about uh, starting up a, a mastermind around uh, tribe building like we've been talking about here. Excellent. And if someone, this is a question I proposed, if someone goes, I'm ready to start building my meetup, most likely you would be, their, let's say their tribe through whatever mechanism. Are you available once they've done the basics as a personal coach for a fee? Yes. In fact, what I'd say as a prerequisite is um, watch that meetup video first. It's kind of like Bob. You can't, The only way you can get in Mastery and Moth is you go through the prerequisites because if you come into Mastery and Moth and imagine um, you went to Mastery and Moth and you had no prereqs. Whoa. That, I mean, that would, or imagine going to Body Electronics if you just randomly picked somebody off the street and took them into Body Electronics. No. No, no. <laughs> it, 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 no. it's a mismatch, and so um, uh, I am available for um, personal consultations and go through that uh, video first and take notes, and then where you have questions, then I'm happy to to uh, meet with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis and uh, consult with them if they have questions that uh, they require answering. Awesome, cool, awesome. awesome. Well, I love you. Love you too, brother. And I'll love your four legged and your whole family. I will, and I'll uh, talk with Aaron and have him send you a goodie bag. It'll go out today. Awesome, my friend. Let's give a hand to you. <laughs> See you guys later. Ciao. Bye. 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 Bye.